Today, we're going to talk about the highest dividend paying companies that also feature in the FTSE 250. All of the companies on this list have a dividend yield of at least 6%. For those of you who don't know, here in the UK, we have the FTSE 100, which is the 100 largest companies by market capitalization here in the UK. And following on from that, we have the FTSE 250, which is the next largest 250 companies that didn't quite make it onto the FTSE 100. These 10 high dividend paying companies that I'm going to share with you today are by no means the best companies for you to invest in. I wanted to share them with you and then of course you can go off and do your own research as I am not a qualified financial advisor. There is way more to dividend investing and stock investing in general than just picking companies based off of their dividend yield. You need to look at way more than just which companies are paying you the highest, offering the highest dividend yield because quite often it can be a concern if companies are offering a really big yield. But anyway, we'll get onto that a bit later. Let's jump in to the company that takes 10th place. In 10th place, we have Sequoia Economic Infrastructure Fund. This company operates within the financial sector. Sequoia are a British investment fund and they look to invest in income generating economic infrastructure. Economic infrastructure are physical things that benefit the economy. So things such as roads, railway, waterways, airways, uh, sewage systems, all things like that. They have a market capitalization of £1.83 billion pounds and they offer quarterly dividend payments. And right now, the dividend yield for this company in 10th place on my list today sits at 6.02%. Let's have a look at how this company has been performing. So over the last month, Sequoia have been down by nearly 5%. Over the last six months, they've been down by nearly 10%. If we look at the one year time period, we can see that the stock has been down by about 6%. And if we max out the graph here, we can see that they've pretty much been trading sideways since inception. They The stock price hasn't really changed at all. Um, they had a massive dip in 2020, as many companies did, and they slowly rose a little bit from that. But all in all, it appears that they've been trading pretty much sideways. And that may be why they offer such a nice dividend yield. You really have to be careful sometimes with these companies. I don't know too much about Sequoia, honestly, so I can't really make a judgment. I've not looked into their fundamentals, which I would if I was looking to invest into them. But I just know that sometimes when a company offers a really high dividend yield, they may be compensating for other areas. We now move on to ninth place. So the ninth largest dividend payer that also features in the FTSE 250. And the company that takes this place is called Ashmore Group. They operate in the investment banking and brokerage sector. This company is a British investment manager that basically specialize in investing into emerging markets. They have a market cap of 1.97 billion pounds and they pay quarterly dividend payments. The current yield for this company comes in at 6.08%. So only slightly higher than the previous company that we just spoke about. Over the last one month, Ashmore Group has been down by nearly 9%. If we look at six months, we can see that they've been down by a whopping 32%. That's not looking great for them. If we look at one year, again, the picture only starts getting worse at down by 42.63%. And let's just max it out here. Okay, over the whole course of the timeline, they are up by 40%. So you can see here that they've had a few very large dips, um, 2020 being one as expected, and they currently seem to be trading downwards as well. So they've seen some peaks, but they've also seen some real dips. In eighth place, we have GCP Infrastructure Investments. And as the name gives away, this is a large British investment trust who look to dedicate their investments to the infrastructure industry. They have a market cap that comes in at just over £914 million. And again, they pay quarterly dividend payments with an annual yield coming in at 6.8%. And I will just say this is a stock that recently underwent a dividend cut. Over the last one month, GCP have been down by around 7%. Over the last six months, not as bad, down by 3.5%-ish. One year, down by even less, 2.45%. And hopefully, if we max it out, what are we going to get? Yeah, we're going to get a positive return, but a very, very small one of just over, well, just under, sorry, 2%. 
So you can see there's not been too much of a big growth since the company started. And we saw a very, very nasty decline here in 2020. I mean, if you, if you invested back in 2020, right at the pinnacle of this drop, you would have seen some nice gains, maybe even gains like The Rock can give. But honestly, they've traded pretty sideways. Again, I have not looked into their fundamentals, but let's jump in to the next one on the list. In seventh place, we have Contour Global. This is not a makeup company. This is actually a company that operates within the electricity sector and they are global. They operate in 20 countries. They have a market cap of 1.21 billion pounds and they pay dividends four times a year. Right now, their dividend comes in at 6.92%, so just under the 7% mark. Over the last one month, they have been down by 5.67%. Over the last six months, a similar story down by 6.63%. If we take a look at the one year picture, they're down by just under 10%. And hopefully, no, unfortunately, if we max out the graph, they are down by nearly 30%. So they've not really seen any growth so far since being a public company. They started out um, in 2017, November at 252 trading at 252 and now they're on 183. Maybe they'll see growth in the near future, but yeah, it's not looked good if you have been an investor thus far. The next one and the one that comes in at sixth place is a company that most people that live in the UK have probably heard of, and that is the Direct Line Group. They are in the insurance sector and they provide insurance via the phone or via the internet. And when I was making this video, I didn't realize that they have actually changed their logo. I don't know if you remember, but they always had that red telephone as the logo. Did they have the dog as well? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they've changed it, unfortunately. Times move on. The Direct Line Group actually are made up of a few different companies. So they have Direct Line, they have Green Flag, and they also have Churchill as well, along with a few other companies that actually form the Direct Line Group. Their market cap is the largest market cap I think on this list, but definitely this far. And that comes in at 4.06 billion pounds. They pay out twice a year and their dividend yield comes in at 7.24%. Now let's jump to a screen recording and see how they've been performing. Alrighty, so over the last one month, Direct Line Group have been up by 7.59%. Over the last six months, down by 0.1%, 0.10%. And one year up by one and a half percent. And if we max it out here, they have been up by 50.55%. So that's that's pretty good. How long has this been going on for? Since 2012. Let's have a look over the last five years. Okay, over the last five years, not, not been so good. They got hit pretty hard in 2020, not as hard as some other companies I've seen. Um, and they appear to be on a little rise recently. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, so they've been going up gradually. In at number five, we have Jupiter Fund Management. And as the name probably gives away, this company operate within the investment banking sector and they manage assets on behalf of private investors. Their dividend yield currently comes in at 7.51% and they will pay their investors twice every single year. Oh, and the market cap for this company comes in at 1.24 billion pounds. If we take a look at how they've been performing, we can see that over the last one month, they've been down by 15.62%. Six months, painting a similar picture, down by over 18%. One year, again, down by 22%. And if we max it out, okay, over the course of their lifetime on the public market, they've been up by nearly 18%. In at number four, we have Hammerson. Hammerson are actually what's known as a REIT. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, then watch this video that I'll pop up here because you really should know what a REIT is. If you live in the UK, then this is the company that own the Ball Ring Shopping Center in Birmingham. There's a fun fact for you. But they also own lots and lots of other pieces of real estate. They have a market capitalization of 1.75 billion pounds, and they pay out to their investors twice a year. Currently, their dividend yield comes in at 10.02%, but they have recently undergone a dividend cut. And they've also been offering their investors something called Enhanced Script Dividend Alternative, which is basically where they keep the money that they would have paid their investors as dividends. They keep it and instead they offer 
extra additional shares to the investor. So basically it's a way for the shareholders to increase their holdings within the company without actually buying more shares, but they do have to give up their dividends in order to get that. Let's have a look at how they've been performing. So over the last one month, they have been up by 15.31%. Over the last six months, again, they're up by 11.34%. If we have a look over the last year, they've done really, really well. So they're up by 77.82%. That would have been amazing if you had invested here and sold here that would have been well specifically here would have been better or here but that would have been a really really good return um but i know that a lot of investors want to look for long-term holdings and i absolutely agree that's what i try to do i'm not really into buying something and then selling it a year later i know that happens obviously um but it's quite a lot of work to keep up with all of these companies um, if we just max out the graph here over the time period since 1988 to the present day, we have seen them go down by over 80%. REITs tend to be quite a trustworthy way of getting good dividends because they have to pay at least 90% of their profits back to their investors in the form of dividends. But anyway, watch that video that I told you about earlier if you want to know more about REITs. We have now made it into the top three. So these next three are the three largest dividend paying companies. So those companies that have the highest dividend yield that feature in the FTSE 250. So without further ado, let's jump in to third place. In third place is CMC Markets. And again, they operate within the investment banking sector. They are an online platform for things like spread betting, CFDs and Forex trading. They have a market cap of over £668 million and they pay dividends twice every year. And their dividend yield currently comes in at a massive 10.84%. So let's see how they've been performing. Over the last month, they've been down by over 11%, six months down by over 46%. They had a massive hit here, as you can see. Over the last one year, down again by 47%, five years. They've actually been up by nearly 100%. And if we max it out, they are down by minus, they're down by, sorry, 4.28%. So yeah, this could be why they are offering such a high dividend yield. As I said, sometimes you have to be a bit skeptical, but if it's a company that you really believe in, then again, they still may be a good investment. In second place, we have Diversified Energy Company. They operate within the energy sector. This company deals with the production, marketing, and transportation of natural gas and oil, and they also own thousands and thousands of oil and gas wells in the US. They have had some issues regarding greenhouse gas emissions, specifically methane, uh, which did cause their stock price to fall quite rapidly. Their market cap is sitting at around 905 million pounds and they pay their investors dividends four times a year. Currently, their dividend yield sits at 11.29%. Over the last one month, they are down by just over 3%. Six months up by nearly 4%. One year down by 9.2%. Five years up by 88.67%. And if we max it out here, we can see that all time since 2017, so they've not actually been going that long They on the public market, they are up by nearly 90%. If you've made it this far in the video, we are only left with first place. So this is going to be the company that pays the highest dividend yield that features on the FTSE 250. And that company is Forexpo. Forexpo operate within the metals and mining industry and they are specifically an exporter of iron ore pellets. They have a market cap of 1.5 billion pounds. Their dividend frequency is twice a year, but that does rise to about five times a year. So five dividend payouts per year when you include their special dividend payouts. The current dividend yield is a whopping 17.23% which is absolutely crazy and is even so much larger than the second place on this list. 17.23% is already insane. But in 2020, they were actually given a dividend yield of about 20%. And this 20% dividend yield that they were offering sat hand in hand with their stock price falling. As I've said, sometimes these high dividend yields can really deter an investor and actually 
be a little bit of a cause for concern. So it's really important that before you put your hard earned money into any of these companies, you do your own due diligence. Let's have a look at the chart for this company. Over the last one month, they have been down by 17%, six months down by nearly 42%, if we look at them over the last one year, they are down by nearly 12%, five years up by nearly 57%, and let's just max it out here. Okay, all time they are up by 70.31%, and you can see from this chart, they trade quite volatilely. Volatilely? Their trading is quite volatile, their stock price is quite volatile. They are rapidly going to new highs and then plummeting right back down up to new highs, plummeting back down. You can see it here, here, and here. This, this um, stock price change is really linked to how in demand iron ore pellets are, because that is essentially what they're doing. If this commodity isn't wanted, that's gonna be seen in their stock price. They have one unique item that they really deal with, and how well their company do really depends on how much that is needed. We've spoken a little bit about the problem with just judging companies based on their dividend yield. So I think you understand what I'm trying to say there. I won't touch on that anymore. But what I did want to say is that some of the highest dividend yield companies tend to operate within specific sectors. So on the FTSE 100, we saw a lot of gas and oil and electricity companies because they tend to be quite volatile. On the FTSE 250, we've seen a lot of investment banking. Well, most of them have been that, honestly. And we've seen a couple in other industries, such as the energy sector. So if you were to make a portfolio just made up of high paying dividend yield companies, you would have a really concentrated portfolio, which may not be very good for diversifying especially if your risk appetite isn't too high. If you want to see which are the highest dividend paying companies in the FTSE 100, watch this video here.